Sentiment Classification of COVID-19 Online Articles, The Impact of Changing Parameter Values on Bidirectional LSTM Abstract The advancement of digital technology has played an essential role in shaping the impact of social media. The increasing number of people who use Facebook, Twitter, INSTagram, weblogs, and other social networking sites has led to a considerable amount of textual content online, including news articles and historical documents. Information published by online news media has a proactive role in shaping people's understanding and reactions towards different situations, influencing policy actions. Current research points to a direction where using artificial intelligence techniques enhance text mining capabilities. Stimulated by this, ways to analyze COVID-19 related articles in the context of sentiment classification are sought. This study examines the impact of changing parameter values on the performance of LSTM and BLSTM models for sentiment classification. The dataset used in this study contains more than 10,000 COVID-19 online articles published between May 2020 and September 2020. The primary providers of these articles were 10news.com, cnn.com, and foxlaw.com. The evaluation of the models considered the calculation of accuracy on the validation set. Experimental results show that updating parameters from one experiment to another can gradually optimize the accuracy of deep learning models. Keywords NLP, deep learning, text classification, sentiment analysis, COVID-19. I Introduction the rapid growth in social media usage allowed people of all categories to share their opinions about a wide range of topics. This has led to a considerable amount of textual content online, including news articles and historical documents. Applying text mining methods to discover insights from such corpus can be helpful to individuals, business organizations, and governments. Consequently, natural language processing NLP, Techniques such as sentiment analysis have become an important tool in which attitudes, thoughts, opinions, or judgments towards a particular subject has been extracted. The emergence of the coronavirus pandemic led the mass media providing constant updates on the crisis, describing the impact on the economy and society and the continuous innovations in medical science related to vaccine development and treatments. News articles from well-known online news providers work like a receiver transmitter sentiment tool that influence policy actions. For example, an economic analyst could rely on information from the media to forecast the economic impact on a business, while a political analyst could write articles to guide people's sentiments. In the context of data science, the problem of classifying texts according to sentiment can be solved by sentiment analysis using predefined polarity assigned to each word. Though easy to apply with modern Python tools like Vader of NLTK and TextBlob, this approach could meet several drawbacks. When using such tools, semantics, morphology, and colloquialisms belong to a non-conceivable spectrum. Moreover, identical words within different language frameworks produce the same polarity, thus skewing what a natural speaker perceives. Figure 1 demonstrates a case of skewed sentiment. The second solution for a data scientist is to complete this task by constructing a model following the principle learning from example. This supervised training process aims to estimate the parameters of a problem using training data. Defining the model's structure in advance is the only way for the scientist to use prior knowledge regarding this problem 1. Recent developments in computer processors allow scientific researchers to use large volumes of text documents, trained on complex ML models with millions of parameters in an acceptable time. However, the difficulty with this kind of approach is that it needs labeled datasets to train ML models to learn over time. For example, to model a binary text classification problem, annotators must first read and assign positive, 1, or negative, 0 values to each text document. ML models are trained to detect the underlying patterns and relationships between the input text data and the assigned labels. Finally, the trained models can classify accurate labeling results when presented with never-before-seen unlabeled text data. Text classification problems have been studied in many application areas, such as sentiment analysis, topic modeling, recommender systems, and intent detection too. 
one critical challenge confronting most researchers is the abundance of an unlabeled data set. The volume of data makes it difficult to train learning algorithms in a feasible time which could degrade the accuracy of the classification model. However, the advancement of deep learning-based methods has become essential in developing robust and efficient classification models while reducing the training time. One of the most used text mining techniques in NLP is text feature vectorization. This technique converts input text data into vectors of real numbers, which is the format the ML models support. Prior literature suggests that two of the most common feature vectorization techniques applied in text classification are bag of words, BOW, and the term frequency, inverse document frequency, TFIDF, 2. A more advanced approach such as word embeddings and pre-trained bird models has been widely used to extract patterns from text sequences. These models have effectively generated language sequences on downstream tasks with higher accuracy, including rich contextual awareness, semantic and syntactic properties, and linear relationships between words. In modeling text classification problems, the Bayesian model has been effectively applied to calculate the probability of text sequences. Other approaches such as support vector machines, logistic regression, and decision tree algorithms have gained popularity in the efficient implementation of text classification tasks in the past years. The current state of the art for text classification uses DL models to capture complex linguistic information from texts 3. The nonlinearity of DL methods and their ability to easily integrate pre-trained word embeddings often lead to higher classification accuracy than classical linear classifiers for, 5. This study demonstrates using a DL method, including layers of word embeddings, convolution, dropout, and the extension of LSTM to BLSTM, to model COVID-19 text data. The primary objective is to analyze the impact of extending LSTM to BLSTM in a flow of increasing dropout rates assigned on different layers and achieving progressively higher classification accuracies. Two previous work. Sentiment analysis is an active research area in NLP, text mining, and web mining, which extracts subjective information from source materials. In recent times, various DL models, including DNN, CNN, and RNN, have been used to increase the efficiency of sentiment analysis tasks. This study 6 investigated backdoor attacks against LSTM-based text classification for sentiment analysis by poisoning the data set of IMDb movie reviews. They explain that when one injects the backdoor, the model will misclassify any text samples that contain a specific trigger sentence into a target category. Their experiment achieved a 96% success rate, with a 1% poisoning rate proving that LSTM is also vulnerable to backdoor attacks like CNN. A related study analyzed the hierarchical LSTM network, HAN, for text classification 7. They mined three different datasets and trained CNN, RNN, and HAN for each of these datasets. They concluded that CNN is a decent general method for acceptable validation accuracy, while RNN and HAN did not provide consistent results. Nevertheless, the analysis shows that HAN outperforms other algorithms when treating problems with large-scale datasets. Another approach used LSTM combined with word embeddings to develop text classification models for more than 30 languages achieving high accuracy, more than 87%. 8 They built two axes of binary classifications. The first one was to detect actionability, and the second one was to catch the political preference of tweets. The model was evaluated on an extensive data set with more than 300,000 rows. Results show that LSTM outperforms other algorithms when combined with word embeddings. They also reached a recipe to maximize accuracy that sets LSTM to 32 units word embeddings to 128, and the batch size to 64 observations, adding a dropout layer before the activation function. Moreover, they investigated the optimizers and the activation function type and concluded that atom and the sigmoid function increased accuracy. Some other research focuses on using a neural network language model on pre-trained word vectors. For example, the authors in 9 utilized the bidirectional recurrent neural network, BRNN, 
to substitute pooling layers in CNN to preserve the local information details and catch long-term dependencies. They validated their model using two datasets, A, Stanford Large Movie Review, IMDb, and B, Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank, SST. They concluded that CNN could extract higher-level features invariant to local translation, and the RNN preserved order information even with one layer. They suggested that combining the two models could yield better classification results. Most approaches that use ensemble learning models toward sentiment analysis involve feature engineering to enhance predictive performance. The authors in this study 10 developed a paradigm of a multi-objective, optimization-based weighted voting framework to assign appropriate weight values to classification algorithms, with each output class based on the predictive performance of the classifiers. The proposed ensemble model is based on static classifier selection involving majority voting error and forward search and a multi-objective differential evolution algorithm. The experimental analysis of classification tasks suggests that the proposed framework outperforms other conventional ensemble learning models such as AdaBoost, bagging, random subspace, and majority voting. A related study presents an efficient sentiment classification scheme with high predictive performance to analyze a corpus containing 66,000 massive open online courses reviews using conventional classification algorithms, ensemble learning, and deep learning methods 11. The machine learning and ensemble learning methods use weighted feature extraction schemes such as TP, TF, and TFIDF. The deep learning-based approach utilized word embedding schemes such as WORD2VEC, GLOVE, and fast text for text representation. The empirical analysis indicates that deep learning-based architectures outperform ensemble learning and machine learning methods for sentiment analysis on educational data mining. Another study used conventional text representation schemes and machine learning classifiers to analyze a corpus containing approximately 700 students' reviews written in Turkish 12. The empirical results indicate that the machine learning-based approach yields promising results on students' evaluation of higher educational institutions. This study proposed an effective deep learning-based approach to sentiment analysis on product reviews obtained from Twitter. The presented architecture combines TFIDF weighted glove word embedding with CNNLSTM architecture 13. The CNNLSTM architecture consists of five layers, weighted embedding layer, convolution layer, max pooling layer, followed by LSTM, and dense layer. In the empirical analysis, the predictive performance of different word embedding schemes with several weighted functions has been evaluated in conjunction with conventional deep neural network architectures. The empirical results indicate that the proposed deep learning architecture outperforms the conventional deep learning methods. 3. Background A. Textual data A. Handling textual data B. Vectorizing text features Analyzing text documents generally requires some fundamental cleaning and pre-processing steps to improve the quality of the data set. Text pre-processing includes cleaning text data to remove unnecessary noise such as witty spaces, stop words, punctuations, misspelled words, and special characters. Words may also be lemmatized or stemmed using well-known and tested automated tools like WordNet Lemmatizer or Porter Stemmer, both implemented within NLTK. The purpose of these steps is to remove from the text possible features semantically indifferent, extract features, tokens, like words, emoticons, periods, and normalize terms by reducing the morphological index to lemma or stem. Algorithms may use detailed dictionaries to draw the appropriate information 14. After completing these steps, the remaining entities become the features of the classification problem. The presence and the interaction of these features describe the problem's classes 15. Vectorization is a feature extraction technique that assigns text features a numerical vector representation that a classification algorithm supports. A good feature vectorization technique enhances the readability of the classification model, help reduce the time required to train a learning algorithm, and increases the model's generalization ability while eliminating overfitting. The most commonly used BOW illustrates such a vectorizing process creating a sparse representation despite not preserving the sentence's structure 16. Besides, 
Previous research indicates that integrating pre-trained word embeddings with DL models result in superior classification results 5. The word embeddings representation uses dense vectors to project each word into a continuous vector space. The word's position in the vector space depends on its surroundings. The embedding is the word's position in the learned vector space 17. Word embeddings create vectors that keep semantic similarity according to the linguistical distributional hypothesis 18. B layers of deep learning method A convolutional layer. B max pooling. C LSTM layer. D bidirectional extension on LSTM layer. E dropout layer. F dense layer. G optimization algorithm. In this study, the chosen DL method is the classifier pipeline sequential model, after vectorizing text. In the context of the Keras implementation for DL in Python, the sequential model allows for a simple stack of layers where each layer has exactly one input tensor and one output tensor, Keras.io web link. A convolution layer as part of a DL method is an automated system for feature extraction from a fixed length segment. The location of the feature is not significant 19. There are three hyperparameters to tune, i, the depth to define the number of neurons to be connected, 2, the stride to determine the allocation of the depth columns, and, 3, the padding to control the spatial size of the output. A convolution layer on top of a word vector before a fully connected layer can achieve excellent sentence classification results 20. The max pooling layer divides the vector into equal rectangles and then outputs the maximum from every rectangle. The intuition behind this process is that the relativity of the location of a feature is critical. The result of this layer is to control overfitting by reducing the spatial size of the representation. Successive convolution layers activated by a rectified linear unit, RELU, followed by a max pooling layer may prove more efficient 19. LSTM is an improvement in the context of the standard RNN to address the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients after back propagation 21. LSTM units consist of cells and gates. A cell is the memory of the LSTM unit to record the dependencies of the input sequence. With LSTM units, when error values are back propagated from the output layer, the error remains in the LSTM unit's cell. There are three gates in every unit to control the information flow, i, the input gate to control the flow of new values, 2, the output gate to determine whether the values in memory will be used in the activation, and, 3, the forget gate to remove a value from the cell. The activation can be a sigmoid or a tangent function. Extending an LSTM layer to bidirectional connects two hidden layers of opposite directions. With this extension, the output layer simultaneously carries information from the past and the future states 1. The earlier hidden states only observe a few vectors from the lower layer, while the latter is computed based on most lower layer vectors 9. Dropout in the context of a DL method is a regularization process of removing a percentage of nodes from the NN to avoid overfitting and maximizing the model's generalization. The removal of the nodes during dropout is a stochastic process. The reduced network keeps updating its weights, while the removed nodes preserve their weights during this training stage. The results are, a, accelerated training, b, feature robustness, and, c, depreciation of nodes interaction 22. A dense layer is a fully connected layer where every input is connected to an output with a weight. The dense layer performs a linear operation which may end with a nonlinear activation function. Several dense layers may exist in a DL method. However, the last layer in the DL classification tasks calculates the class's probability, and this is a dense layer with the appropriate nonlinear activation. The last layer's usual activation is the sigmoid function 9, but any function can be used for the previous dense layers. There are several optimization algorithms one may select. Studies have shown that the selection can make a difference in the training time and the result to achieve. For example, a study introduced an efficient stochastic optimization that only requires first-order gradients and little memory requirement 23. Their method computes individual adaptive learning rates for different parameters from estimates of first and second moments of the gradients. 
They named their algorithm Atom derived from adaptive moment estimation. Their method combines the advantages of two popular methods, Adagrad 24, which works well with sparse gradients, and RMS Prop 25, which works well in online and non-stationary settings. Studies have compared famous stochastic gradient descent algorithms and suggested that Atom might be the overall best choice 8, 26. Similarly, an experiment on IMDb BOW features suggests that Atom can be more efficient for text classification tasks 23, figure 5. For materials and methods A data collection and preparation. B text cleaning and pre-processing. C vectorizing tokens. D train slash test split. E sequential model. F impact of bidirectional extension. We scrape new public data from famous online news providers using keywords like coronavirus and COVID-19. A scraper downloaded over 10,000 articles corresponding to the date range, May 2020 until September 2020. The primary providers of these articles were 10news.com, cnn.com, and foxlaw.com. The downloaded articles varied significantly in the number of sentences and the word count. The downloaded articles varied significantly in the number of sentences and word counts. To normalize the text size, we reconstruct the news articles to create paragraphs with approximately 10 sentences to utilize as many data points as possible. A script that automatically applies NLTK sentence tokenizer was run to extract 41,839 text entities labeled into different sentiment categories. The NLTK tokenizer was updated to recognize abbreviations like Drive, MR, MRS, Prof, Inc, and IE to avoid some known mistakes. The task of labeling data was handled manually by human annotation. The annotators assigned the value 1, positive class, for texts with positive sentiment and 0, negative class, for texts with negative sentiment. After the end of the labeling process, about 8,500 texts were removed from the data set. Annotators assigned these texts with contradictory labels because of neutrality or interpretation difficulty. The final data set contained 33,324 texts, of which 62.51% belonged to the positive class, and 37.49% belonged to the negative class 27. The articles contained various features that added a non-necessary burden on dimensionality. Moreover, names of famous personalities like Donald Trump and other entities could add bias to the model. It would be easy for a DL model to learn the names and titles connected to a sentiment instead of learning unbiased text features. There were two cleaning axes, I, clean tokens semantically insignificant and, 2, clean tokens that may convey bias. Thus, titled names, uppercased words, tokens containing non-alphanumeric characters, numbers, stop words, and words like corona, coronavirus, COVID-19 were removed from the text. This study also introduces an abstraction token to replace 22 negations like not, wouldn't, cannot, can't, mightn't, etc. under the token negation. Keeping a negation indicator in the text might help the model to distinguish bigrams and trigrams like not bad, not good enough, cannot do. The remaining tokens were stemmed using the Porter stemmer of NLTK. The average number of tokens for texts remaining in the data set was 91, with a maximum of 271 and 75% of the instances to have more than 73 tokens, figure 2. The tokens number follows the normal distribution closely except for a minimal number of outliers creating a right tail. The analysis led to the decision to normalize the data further and remove possible outliers. Under this concept, texts containing less than 36 tokens were removed. This token number corresponds to the 0.0150 st tile of the tokens distribution. By this, 1.5% of the data possibly corresponding to outliers, was excluded. The available data is 32,841 sequences of cleaned and stemmed text tokens. The vocabulary of this data reached 22,073 unique tokens. The frequencies of these tokens were calculated and ranked. Also, 
the minimum acceptable frequency was set intuitively to 8. The most frequent tokens were they, said with 50,237 appearances, negation with 28,093, people with 22,064, state 16,358, and case with 15,676. The token negation corresponds to stop words preserved in the text under this abstraction token as described in section 4.2. Some tokens with minimum frequency were swoosh, investiture, unclimb, kafir, mandarin. For constructing the sequences, unique integers replaced every token. Tokens having frequency under the minimum, 8. Received zero value. The length of every sequence was set to the 0.9850 st chuan tile of the token distribution, 152. Thus, after truncating and padding the sequences, the vectorized data set consisted of 32,841 sequences of 152 units. In this study, 67% of the data was used as the training set and the remaining 33% as the validation set. The split was random but a seed was selected for reproducibility. The number of sequences used to train the model was 22,003, and the number of sequences to test it was 10,838. The building strategy of the sequential model was to add a dropout after every layer. Conducting several experiments with fluctuating parameters and taking the maximum accuracy after training models differing to the bidirectional extension of LSTM would create a flow of comparable accuracies. The first layer on the stack would be an embedding layer with input the vocabulary number, 22,073 unique tokens, and output a 64-dimension vector of length 152, 0.9850 st chuan tile of the token distribution. A dropout layer would follow. The third layer would be a one-dimensional convolution layer with 16 filters and an activation function set to ReLU followed by a max pooling layer with pool size set to 2. The fifth layer would again be a dropout layer, and then the LSTM layer would follow either with a bidirectional extension or not. The LSTM layer also supports internal dropouts, but one more dropout layer corresponds to the whole system. The system is completed with a dense layer with a nonlinear activation, sigmoid function, to calculate the final output, probabilities a binary cross entropy as the loss function, and Adam's declaration be the DL optimizer. Table 1 summarizes the layers and the parameters of the A way to analyze how BLSTM may impact optimal parameters is to conduct 6 experiments, training LSTM and BLSTM models for 5, 5, epochs using the train set. Every experiment regards changing the values of one parameter. This concept uses the validation data to calculate the accuracy score and record it for every epoch. After completing the training for every parameter value, a comparison of the achieved maximum accuracy for every value demonstrates the bidirectional extension's impact on maximum accuracy. Updating the parameters from one experiment to the other gradually optimizes accuracy, performing and proposing a parameter tuning for both LSTM and BLSTM. The evaluation of the results proposes ways to handle parameters to utilize the bidirectional extension of LSTM. V result A batch size. B dropout after embedding layer. C dropout after convolution layer. D LSTM internal non-recurrent dropout. E LSTM recurrent dropout. F final dropout. The first experiment demonstrated how the bidirectional extension could influence the optimal batch size. There were six sizes tested, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512. Table 2 illustrates the maximum accuracies achieved for every batch size. LSTM and BLSTM seem to provide higher accuracies for smaller batch sizes. BLSTM seems to be more stable than LSTM despite achieving lower accuracies. The highest LSTM accuracy was 0.8966 for batch size 32 versus 0.8951 for batch size 16 for BLSTM. The second experiment analyzed the dropout after the embedding layer. The embedding layer provides 64 dimensions and 4, 4, dropout values were tested, 
0.75. The batch size for this iteration was set to 64 for both LSTM and BLSTM. The maximum accuracy for LSTM reached 0.8977 for a 0.50 dropout and BLSTM 0.8960 for a 0.25 dropout. It seems that a dropout rate after embeddings can be useful for both LSTM and BLSTM. BLSTM does not seem to perform better than LSTM, yet. Figure 7 shows these results, and one may also observe that BLSTM is again more stable than LSTM. The third experiment analyzed the dropout after the convolution and the max pooling layer. The dropout values tested were the 0, 0 0.10, 0 0.25, 0 0.375, 0 0.50, 0 0.625, 0 0.750. The batch size and the dropout after embedding were set to 64 and 0 0.50, respectively, for LSTM and BLSTM. The best result for LSTM was a maximum accuracy of 0 0.8967 achieved for a 0 0.10 dropout. On the contrary, BLSTM achieved a 0.9008 accuracy for a 0.25 dropout. The results from Table 4 suggest that tuning the dropout rate after convolution and max pooling may prove more important when extending LSTM to bidirectional. The LSTM layer provides two internal dropout parameters, a recurrent and non-recurrent dropout. Internal non-recurrent dropout refers to the fraction of the units to drop for the input's linear transformation. The fourth experiment of this study tested how bidirectional extension may influence maximum accuracy in a flow of different dropout rates than a simple LSTM after performing some parameter searching. The batch size and the dropout after embedding did not change. Dropout after the convolution layer is set to 0.10 for LSTM and 0.25 for BLSTM. The experiment resulted in LSTM achieving a 0.9007 maximum accuracy for a 0.375 dropout rate and BLSTM a 0.9032 for a 0.10 dropout rate, Table 5. Both LSTM and BLSTM appeared to earn a bit of accuracy. Besides, the previous observation about BLSTM being more stable but demanding careful parameter tuning was also confirmed. In this study, recurrent dropout is the fraction of the units to drop for the linear transformation of the recurrent state. The fifth experiment explored the possibility of improving accuracy when training with several recurrent dropout rates. The rates to run are, 0, 0 0.10, 0 0.25, 0 0.375, 0 0.50, 0 0.625, 0.75 while the parameters of non-recurrent dropout were updated to 0.375 for LSTM and 0.10 for BLSTM. This experiment indicates that recurrent dropout in the LSTM cell limits the amount of information the model receives. Nevertheless, BLSTM accuracy seems steadily higher than LSTM, Table 6. The previous experiment suggests that recurrent dropout in the LSTM cell cannot improve the accuracy of either the LSTM or the BLSTM models. For validating our results until this stage, a final experiment was run with dropout rates, 0, 0 0.10, 0 0.25, 0 0.375, 0 0.50, 0 0.625, 0 0.75. We expected that a non-zero rate could not beat the previous highest accuracies. A different result would mean that dropout rates could further receive updates with greater values. The highest accuracy for BLSTM was 0.9002, achieved for a zero rate, while the highest accuracy for LSTM was 0.8980, achieved with a 0.10 rate, Table 7. 6. Future Work the contribution of DL and text pre-processing in achieving a classification accuracy greater than 0.90 could support additional research. In the text pre-processing section, we introduced the abstraction token. However, it was out of this study's scope to analyze it further and discover its possible contribution to the accuracy. 
We strongly believe that finding ways to increase abstraction features in a model may utilize new entities. In the future, we wish to measure the abstraction's token contribution to the accuracy of a classification model in sentiment analysis and extend it to lexical entities different from stop words. Moriso, this study achieved a good classification accuracy while analyzing the impact of the bidirectional extension of LSTM during a dropout fluctuation. Further work may perform a similar analysis on changing LSTM units or embedding units that have been kept steady during this experiment. 7. Conclusion This study used a labeled dataset to analyze the impact of the bidirectional extension of the LSTM layer in sentiment analysis. We conducted five experiments to analyze the connection of dropout rates to the maximum accuracy the classifier can achieve and to analyze the batch size. The findings may support the notion that BLSTM can outperform LSTM when tuned carefully and with detail. The experiments also demonstrated that while BLSTM needs meticulous tuning to maximize its predictability, it can also handle inaccurate and unlucky parameter tuning more successfully than LSTM. We additionally indicated that LSTM efficiency could vary, and randomness may play a role and should be considered when training a model. We also analyzed the idea of combining dropout layers after embeddings, convolution, and LSTM layers, and we found no proof against this. The same idea also suggests that the final dropout layer may be of no use if the previous ones are combined successfully. The first experiment, 5.1, also confirmed the idea that a smaller batch size can achieve higher accuracy. Finally, we proved that sentiment analysis using DL could be successful for text documents characterized by formality and objectivity such as those from prominent news. Organizations with the primary purpose of informing rather than expressing personal and subjective opinions and judgments. Acknowledgement This study was supported by the National Key R backslash and D program of China, Grant No. 2018YFA0306703. Conflicts of Interest The authors declare that the research was conducted without any commercial or financial relationships that could be interpreted as a potential conflict of interest.